This is Her Standards with me, Queen Tambori. Thank you for joining us for yet another episode of this show that is about inspiration and aspiration, especially for the women folk. Today's show is lit. We have an amazing, amazing guest. Uh, for now, we'll just call her Madam Commissioner. She's in the house and we cannot wait to get to know her. She's probably one of the youngest commissioners we have in the independence of this country. So that's a big deal. And therefore, you at home, what do we expect from you in this chilly weather? Sit back, relax, enjoy the show and wait to be inspired. But maybe I should ask you a couple of questions. Um, do you consider yourself youthful? I don't know. And do you have any big audacious goals? And what are you doing about those goals? Because our guest for today has achieved so much at such a short time and I cannot wait to hear her inspirational stories and so can you. Now you know what you need to do. Hit us up at KTN Home across all social media platforms or I mean talk to me directly. I'm available as Queen Timbori on Facebook, Queen Imbori on Instagram, Queen Isaina on Twitter. You can also find me on LinkedIn as Queen Timbori. So well, without much ado, I am just going to introduce Madam Commissioner Wamboi Nyotu is with us today. Oh, how are you? Wow, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Quite an introduction I there. Know. We have been looking for you and yeah. I'm just glad that I you finally we get to meet up. <laughs> sure, sure. Karibu Nyumbani. Asante. Yeah. Nyumbani ni kuzuri. <laughs> asante, asante. <laughs> it's very nice. Yeah, I thank the Lord that uh, finally we have been able to meet today after days and days of planning. I can imagine. Yeah. Nice to have you on the show. Asante this sana. This is her standards. Yeah. This is the show where we celebrate women mm -hmm. like you, yeah. uh, youthful women, trailblazers. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm so excited that we're able to host you. Sure, sure. Probably one of the youngest uh, uh, guests we've had on the show, so it okay. really gives me pleasure to have you on the show. Ah, wonderful. Mm. Karibu sana. Asante sana. Anyway, um, mm -hmm. I don't think I want to waste time. I'm sure everybody's <laughs> wondering who is Wambo Inyoto. Yeah, yeah, who is Wambo Inyoto? Yeah. Yes. So Wambo Inyoto, mm -hmm. uh, as you've correctly said, I'm a commissioner at the National Cohesion and Integration Commission. I'm also the vice chairperson elected by the commissioners. Wow. Um, probably the youngest commissioner in the history <laughs> of Kenya, and I thank God for those graces. Yeah, I'm also a lawyer by profession, a trained mediator, a trained arbitrator. I'm also a philanthropist who runs the Wamboyoto Foundation just to impact lives of uh, different people in different ways. Yes. Is it okay to ask, for me to ask you how old you are? <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say I'm below 30. You're below 30? <laughs> yeah, for now. Wow. <laughs> yeah. How yeah. did you do it? I mean, me here, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, because we're using <laughs> below and above. I'm above 35, well, I'm above 30. <laughs> and I was just going through some of the achievements that you've been, been able to, to, to achieve, like yeah. you know, being um, vice chair of the National Coalition and Integration uh, Committee. Commission. Commission, yes. Yeah. Commission. How did you Let, do let's, it? let's call it, okay, maybe we, we can just say it's the commission that uh, it should be reconciling communities, mm -hmm. bringing peace, mm -hmm. and curbing hate speech in the country. Very nice. Yes. And I'm sure we'll talk about that in a short while. Sure. How did you do it? Uh, I would say, number one, it's by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you may work hard, you may have all that it takes, you may have all the degrees, but without the grace of the Lord, you may not be able to do it. So I like to say that uh, God has played a very big part in my life. Yeah, but there, there was also the hard work that I had to put in and the, the focus, you know, and uh, going for that which I thought was the right thing. Yeah, so I've been, you know, I would say it's like a roller coaster, mm -hmm. you know, moving and moving and doing crazy things that I also <laughs> never imagined that Big I would Big audacious goals. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> things I never imagined I would yeah. be able to do. Yeah, yeah? Mm -hmm. so been a hell of five years mm -hmm. yeah of but, growth yeah you know yeah mm. and um, I would say I started in the university yeah. I've been a leader in high school in primary school. school 
I went to Gatanga Girls. Oh, uh, Gatanga Girls alumni yes. in the building. Maybe you should wave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I went mm -hmm. to Gatanga Girls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hi to all the Gatanga Girls. Yeah. yeah, we used to call it Gatanga Brown at oh. that time. Yeah. Um, in my primary school, I went to Higaine Primary School and then I went to By Grace. And now I came to university. Uh, university of Nairobi. The University of Nairobi. The <laughs> University of Nairobi. <laughs> yeah. yeah, where I did my undergraduate uh, law degree. I also got back there, you know, in 2020 to do my master's degree, my master's in business administration, strategic management option. So um, I hope I'll be able to graduate this December with that course. Yes. So uh, I would say my, my leadership skills started way back uh, in my early life. Yeah. But uh, when I came to university, I ran for the SONU uh, positions. Mm -hmm. And I would say this was what was life-changing for me because uh, once I got into SONU politics, it taught me uh, SONU, you know, the university politics yeah. at that time, had a way of elevating you to national leadership. Mm -hmm. And uh, national leaders looked up to student leaders to do certain things for them. So I would say that is what really, uh, you know, gave me the limelight. Mm. When I was a student leader then. Which, which uh, position was that? I was nominated to the SONU Parliament. Okay. I had ran for the position of finance secretary mm. at that time. Yeah, but uh, things didn't go as planned. Mm. But I say it's God's plan. I was nominated now to the SONU Parliament. Yeah, then um, now when I f was finishing campus and we had a very vibrant team of uh, student yeah, leaders yeah. Uh, and I just sat and I asked them, now we are, we are leaving campus, we must translate into the national politics, how are we going to do that? We must transition mm -hmm. into the national politics. So I came up with the Warembo na Uhuruto organization that, uh, you know, spread it's like bush fire. Like yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it, uh, it, it, it uh, brought up very many young How leaders. How did the idea come about? I mean, you don't just wake up and decide, I want to come up with uh, a movement. A, a movement. Yeah. yeah, you know, at that time, uh, there, were, there was the Jubilee Youth League. There was, I don't know, Young Jubilee. There were very many... Uh, young people, you know, movements within the Jubilee Party because we were supporting Jubilee Party at that time. And I felt that uh, there's no space for women in these groups that you're talking about. The leadership that uh, we are seeing in the youth groups is just men. There are no women. So we must come up with our own team that is now uh, only talking about the young women. And it is yeah, led by the young women, by the young women, for the young women. From the national level to the county level to the constituency, it was down just to yeah, down to the grassroots. It was just young women. So young women found space in that in that platform, and I'm so happy that today they are nominated uh, MCAs who are mentored in that organization. Yes, there are people who got jobs uh, with their members of parliament. There are people who got jobs with NGOs just because of this uh, uh, mentorship mm -hmm. yeah, by, by the, the, the Warembo organization at that time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I want to cut you short, there's something you say. That, uh, <laughs> Behind every successful woman is a tribe of other successful women who have her back. Interesting because um, the narrative that ha keeps doing rounds is that women, we are our worst enemies yet you're able to start this foundation that focuses on women, particularly in politics, and you, start, you kicked it off and took it to the end. It became successful. Uh, people's lives were transformed. People got jobs. People got political positions. How did you do it? Ah, I know, I know uh, people say that uh, we, a woman is a woman's worst, worst enemy. enemy. It's been said I, I do not agree with that. Mm -hmm. I do not agree with that. Because number one, uh, you don't just follow someone because she's a woman. You follow them or you believe in their ideals because they, they are worth it. You know, you just don't follow people blindly because they are 
you, your own sex or because they are your own tribe or because they have this and that. No, you follow them or you believe in them because they have that one unique thing that you believe in, that you look up to. So when a woman decides not to uh, believe in another woman, it's because of, you know, uh, principle. It's by principle, I would imagine. If it's not by principle, then you can argue on the other uh, issue. But uh, at that time, I think we got what the women, the young women, wanted. Because the young women wanted space for themselves, you know. Space where you don't have to fight with men, where you don't have to, you know, fight every day over, you know, small positions. Mm -hmm. Women needed that particular space in the political arena. And that is what we provided at that time. And I believe that is why they were, you know, able to run with the idea. Because Warembo grew, you know, you know, had machinani, mm. I would say. Everywhere you went, you would find these Warembo young women. Yeah. Yes, it was a serious network. And it is still a serious network. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that is how you evolved now from campus to Warembo now. Yes. And what happened next? And then, um, you know, the Warembo na Uhuruto was, it was uh, an idea that I had just come up with. But uh, at some point, the president needed now the serious youth team to run his, his campaign. And so when opportunity came up, the person who came on top of the minds of the people who were choosing the leaders of the campaign teams was Wambo Inyotu. Oh, God! Because... <laughs> Yeah, because, you know, they had also seen the work that we had done. Mm -hmm. So when it came to the opportunity of choosing the leader of the youth campaign team, the official campaign team for the president, mm -hmm. it was done within the last uh, 190 days mm -hmm. or towards the election. You know, I was just, uh, you know, called upon and I was told, oh, boy, you know, you lead this organization. We would want you to take charge of the youth campaign team. And now we called it Vijana Tokelezea, mm. na Uhuruto. Wow. Yeah, so that one, we went around the whole country doing road shows. I, didn't, I paid rent for my house <laughs> for <laughs> five months, but I never lived there because <laughs> we were always on the road. Jesus Christ, to how was Nairobi. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a refreshing. Uh, mm -hmm. moment because mm -hmm. you also go to know Kenya you go to meet very many different people who are charged and you know when you have that political mind yeah. and you 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 just go sometimes and you meet people I remember there is a rally we addressed in uh, Ukambani mm -hmm. somewhere in Machakos and those people my colleagues after you know we realized that these people are not Jubilee but we managed to talk to them and in the end they were clapping and they were so happy that we were there so we were like wow this is the most fulfilling day that we have had so it was such a beautiful experience for me uh, too much growth but it was such such a huge task for me because i never imagined that that responsibility would be bestowed upon me and I remember I lost six kgs at that time because I would see the phone call of my boss and I would just freeze because I don't know, did I do something you wrong? Did I? To be the president. No, no, no. Oh, there okay. were other people. <laughs> there were other people who were representing him in those uh, issues. Yeah. But I used to see their phone calls and I used to be like, wow, I hope I'm doing everything right. But uh, God is good because they believed in us and they did not micromanage the process. We were given the freedom yeah. to choose what to do. Mm. Yeah? And I thank the Lord because we were able to deliver in the best way possible at that time. So there came the issue of now nomination of leaders to parliament. And uh, my name came as a... Uh, you know, I was placed to be nominated to Senate to represent the youth. Unfortunately, I did not succeed in that, in that, uh, in that venture. And uh, IABC chose my colleague. We were nominated, two of us, me and a gentleman from uh, the Ogiek community called uh, Prengei Victor. So, you know, when the names went to IABC, Prengei Victor was picked for that position and I lost it. 
and uh, social media was just crazy and everyone was like why would you do this to Wamboi Nyutu? Wamboi just leave that party, never work for them again, you know, <laughs> and never support them. But I told my supporters, no, 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 we cannot give up yet. Uh, the, we have lost the Senate, but we have not lost it all. There are many opportunities that you can always get. Yeah. So uh, the nomination went like that, but now later, I was considered uh, and appointed as a director of the National Irrigation Board. I loved that job because when you could go to Turkana and just see how you have been able to transform a place, you know, it's all green, you know, a place where years ago people were dying of hunger, mm -hmm. but the National Irrigation Board brought water, water to them. They are now farming even Sukumawiki, you know. I, it was, it was yeah, it's such a fulfilling job for me and I felt, mm -hmm. wow, if this board can be able to touch every single part of the country that is uh, prone to drought, Kenya would be such a beautiful place. So I loved, I loved that job. And every time I went out, uh, met people, farmers who are, you know, farming bananas that are, you know, the size of a human being, <laughs> a, a grown human <laughs> being. And they could tell you this, uh, this full banana we sell at, uh, you know, 2,000 mm -hmm. Kenya shillings. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? Mm -hmm. In my village, we are, we, we, are the bananas are like this, you know, there are just three bunches of them. And so it was such a fulfilling job for me at that time. And uh, the time came and I feel now I need to grow much, much uh, more. And so I saw an advertisement by the you know, uh, national cohesion. They needed commissioners at that time. And I realized it's a very, very, uh, I would say, rigorous mm -hmm. exercise mm -hmm. because they used to, uh, they put the advert on the newspaper. They said you have to fulfill chapter six of the constitution, you have to have this degree, you have to do all this. So I just went to their website and I looked, I looked at the profile of the former commissioners who are they, how do they, how, did, how, how, how are they profiled? And I profiled them and I saw there was a lawyer at some point mm -hmm. and then uh, there were mediators, arbitrators. I was like, look, I have these qualifications. Why can't I? Yes. But there was one thing. There was no young person in that commission at that time. And so are all other commissions. There was no young person in all these commissions and I knew this is going to be tough for me. You know, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but somehow it must be done. So I did all my applications. It was such a rigorous exercise. Uh, going for an interview, you know, a panel made up of commissioners, you know, the registrar of uh, the judiciary and many other people, about 10 people interviewing you mm -hmm. and just asking you questions tough about, questions. yeah, tough questions. Mm -hmm. Ah, Were you I intimidated? Just, ah, I would say many times I, I, if, if, if I, I realize that some, uh, something is meant to intimidate me, I now grow my hard head. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Every woman must have that side of them. Nice. That, you know, you, you, you wear your tough face mm -hmm. and you wear your confidence. Yeah. yeah, that is when you need it the most. <laughs> so that is when I wore it and I said, I'm going to be my best person today and I thoroughly prepared for that interview. Now after the interview, the, uh, the team now presents names to the president where each region has two names and there was a tough, it was so tough because tough I was fighting with politicians, yeah, non-politicians in this country, uh, former politicians, former members of parliament from my region had applied. And it was, a, I would say, it was a very tough moment for me because I didn't know, I didn't know what the president would pick. Yeah. He would pick his peers, he would pick his friends, mm. he would pick his colleagues mm. from uh, parliament, yeah. you know. Mm. But uh, God is good because he chose me. Wow. Yeah, and so the name was nominated to parliament. Uh, Parliament, we went, had our vetting, which was very, very <laughs> tough, you know. <laughs> it's it's uh, just funny how you appear before Parliament mm -hmm. and you just feel that 
somehow, somehow, these people are meant to bring me down, you know. Yeah. But uh, we managed. We managed. It was uh, the, the toughest. The vetting in parliament was the toughest because, you know, MPs will just throw, throw know. words I've, I've, to you. Yeah, yeah. vetting processes. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. And they they would, yeah. Mm -hmm. and they would ask me, uh, why, why do you, you, you think you're the luckiest young woman in this country? <laughs> why, why are you having another job? You know, and I would tell them, no, 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 I'm not having another job. I have, you know, I will resign from my previous job if I get this job, so that I leave the opportunity to the other young people. It was tough, but I thank the Lord that uh, we managed. So when Parliament finally uh, passed, passed our names, we were now able to be, you know, sworn in by the Chief Justice, the former Chief Justice, Chief Justice Emeritus. Maraga, yeah, we were sworn in, and uh, here we are you now. Are still below twenty, when you know going through this process, you're still below twenty. Below thirty. Below thirty, rather. Yes. Wow. Yes. Uh, let yeah. me just uh, make it easier <laughs> for <Yeah>. you. <laughs> I was uh, nominated when I was twenty-seven. Yes. So now I'm getting to thirty. Wow. Yeah. My next birth, mm -hmm. the birthday, I'll be thirty. Wow. Yes. Now it is said that politics is not for the faint-hearted, even. Uh, mature all the women who are in politics as we speak some of them have really had to deal with a lot of uh, trolling a lot of bullying uh, yet at your age you've been able to run Orembo na Ururuto which progressed to um, Vijana Toklezea and you're able to do this and still stand s strong you know it is not a mean achievement yes how do you do it what's the trick I think number one, you need a strong support system. You need to be grounded. You need to kneel down before your God <laughs> and maybe cry when you feel like you should cry. Yeah, and you need to have uh, people that support you. Yeah. I remember my father even sent me money to run my campaigns back in in in, <laughs> in, in campus. Yeah, in campus. <laughs> yeah, you know, and and he told me go for it. Wow. You know, yeah. And so I feel that my parents really support me, my sisters, you know. If you troll me on Facebook, my sister will be the first one to <laughs> answer you that. back, yeah. <laughs> so I have a strong support system of even friends, mm -hmm. friends who have come from very far with, you know, uh, people who believe, we believe in each other. And we have built each other from scratch and now we are, we are uh, still growing and we believe we will even grow further. Mm -hmm. So have uh, be grounded in terms of family, in terms of religion, you know. Pray to your God and tell him, this is what I want, you know. Uh, and then also have friends that believe in the cause, you know. Many times we mistake, we make mistakes and we, 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 we go with people who are not part of the cause. Mm -hmm. There's an advice that uh, the former executive director of uh, the National Alliance Party, TNE, mm. told me when we were having the Warembo team. Yeah. And he told me, Wamboi, mm. the worst mistake that you'll make in your life is to think that everyone will be for you. Not everyone will be for you, but move with those who believe in the cause. And I took that advice because along the way, there were people who were just meant to, you know, destroy everything that we were trying to build. And I kept remembering what he was telling me. And he told me, go, move forward, keep moving. And don't, don't focus on the distractors, just focus on, on the goal. And that is the advice that really kept me going, you know. And also this thing of, I like finishing what I start. Nice. Yeah. Mm. I like when I start a certain course, mm. it doesn't fail in my hands. You know, I can't live with myself. Mm. So I knew that the movement had to succeed. It had to see the end, you know. That is, that is all that and I there knew. There was no giving up. There was no giving <laughs> up. So, to Lisonga Kusonga. Yeah. So I would say, those are the things that keep me going. The focus and the believing that a, a, an exercise ma cannot fail. Start when when you're the leader, finish, yeah. it cannot fail. Mm, yeah. You lead from the front. Yeah. All right.
Well, on that note, we would like to take a short break. We have with us uh, Madam Commissioner Omboi Nyoto. She is the Vice Chair, National Cohesion and Integration Commission, probably one of the youngest commissioners in the, in the history of this country. We are very excited. I hope you're getting inspired. We will be right back. We have asked you a question. What is it that you are aiming for as a youthful Kenya? Do you have a big, audacious goal and what are you doing about it? Talk to us at KTN Home across all social media platforms or you can hit me up directly at Quinton Bori on Facebook, Queenie Saina on Twitter and Queenie Bori on Instagram. We will be right back. <laughs> 